Something about the coming greater glory. Well, it's so interesting you asked that, Sid, because when I was praying into 2024, immediately in that moment, Psalm 24 flashed in front of my eyes. And Psalm 24 talks about the King of glory. And so as I was kind of pondering this in my heart, the Lord reminded me of a dream I had two years ago where I saw the state of California, half red, half blue, which was showing there was a division among the people. And then all of a sudden I had this thought, what do the colors red and blue combine to make? And they make the color purple. And what does purple signify? It signifies glory, majesty, his presence. And so I believe, Sid, in regards to the glory, that the glory of God is the only solution for where we're at in California, in America. You see, when the glory of God becomes manifest, everything else goes out the door. Preference goes out the door, denominationalism goes out the door, and all we can do is look at this one man, Jesus, and we say, you are the king of glory. And so I believe, Sid, that the glory of God will be released in 2024 in a measure that maybe we've never experienced before. Today, you lead a ministry that does what the gospel says we're supposed to do. You go beyond the four walls of the church. We are carriers of God's presence and we're carriers of the gospel, which is the only message that has the power to set somebody free. I was in an LGBTQ family that had never heard or spoke the name of Jesus ever before. I'm even thinking of this incredible testimony where I was preaching the gospel at a gathering. There was a girl in the crowd who was literally living a transgender lesbian lifestyle. She did not want to be there. A friend dragged her there. She came up to me and told me the story. She said, I walked into the building and as badly as I wanted to leave, I could not leave. She said, I heard your testimony, Ross, and I heard you share the gospel. And immediately I started weeping and I ran to the front where God delivered me from this spirit. And literally within a matter of hours, Sid, she went from living a transgender lifestyle to becoming a born again Christian who is now on fire for God and in a Bible school. And so I share these testimonies to let you know, it's really simple. Would we be willing to open our mouth and share the gospel that has the power to set free a human life and a human soul. There was a, a beginning prophetic dream. Tell me about that dream. Well, in 2020, many of us don't like to remember this, but it was a crazy year in America and in the nations. And I remember I had just come back to God because I actually walked away from him for a few years. And the Holy Spirit said, if you don't stand now, you never will. And so I remember I went to a few revival meetings. I met this guy by the name of Joel, and we started to feel this burning desire to see California see revival because there's been so many massive moves of God in the Golden State. And so as we're in this season, a dream comes to us from a friend, from a prophet. And in this dream, Jesus appears. I want those type of dreams, by the way, <laughs> where Jesus appears. I, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jesus appears to our friend in the dream. He brings him to the water and he says, do you hear the sound of the water? And instantly in that moment, Jesus then says, the ground or the battle in California has been prepared. The victory has already been won. And now is the time for the reins in my spirit. And as soon as Jesus said this, a massive tsunami wave from the Pacific Ocean crashed over the shore and he knew in that dream that that was symbolic of a wave of God's presence touching California and all the way across the nation of America. So this dream comes to us and we say, you know what, if we've learned anything from our spiritual fathers of Lou Engel and Mondo Matthews and these amazing fathers in the faith, we're going to do the dream. And so that's where it all started for us in California. Tell me about the people that got saved and they were on the way to a satanic sacrifice. Yeah, so we heard this testimony after the gathering. When we do our gatherings, we do open air worship, gospel, baptisms, healing, everything that the Great Commission tells us to do. And I remember as I was preaching the gospel, I looked to my left and I see this couple and I knew immediately that they weren't with us in the beginning of the gathering. And so when I preached the gospel, they're the first two people to respond. And right after that moment happens, somebody on our team comes up to me and says, Ross, I just prayed and talked to this couple right before they responded to the gospel. And they told us that they were on their way 
to a satanic gathering, a satanic ritual. They heard the worship music, they stopped, and then they heard the gospel and said, you know what? We're gonna surrender our lives to Jesus. And this happened in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco, one of the most chaotic and darkest places in all of America. It was such a significant moment. At these gatherings, how many usually are there? So like you like you asked, we started with a few hundred people at these gatherings. And then when we started, you know, a few years ago, we weren't even trying to start a ministry. Sid, I had never preached a day in my life. They said, who's going to preach the gospel? And I just lifted my hand and I said, I will. Why, why, so, did you, why, 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 why did you lift your hand? I had never had an issue with communicating publicly. But in this season of 2020 and 2021, where there was so much tension in America, I literally knew that this was the moment that I was born for. And I knew that God had literally crafted me and created me for such a time as this. And so I felt this pull in my heart to say, you know what, it's time for me to use my voice. And so that's what shifted everything for me. We had this crazy idea where I like to say it like this, Sid. I was like, man, what if we shut down Hollywood Boulevard? And I was laughing, but God wasn't. <laughs> and so we showed up at Hollywood Boulevard in July of 2023 and 2,000 people showed up right there in front of the Walk of Fame, in front of the Chinese theater, 115 documented salvations, 38 baptisms, and the church in California proved that we are alive, we are active, and that God is moving in the Golden State. Tell me about your early family life. Yeah, so it starts on day one, right, Sid? I was born by artificial insemination in the city of Los Angeles. And the reason for that is my mom was living a lesbian lifestyle. And so I remember I asked her, mom, you know, how was I born? How was I created? What was that process? And, you know, back in her time, she said she went to a phone book, opened it up and found a lab, walked into the lab and said, hey, I want to be impregnated. I want to be inseminated. They gave her a donor list or a lineup of about 10 men. She chose one, they inseminated her, and I was here nine months later. Just out of curiosity, why did she want to have a child? You know, it's really interesting. I actually asked her recently because I, I wanted to know that question as well. And she said, Ross, ever since I was a young girl, I've always had this desire to have children. But she was around 33 years old and she started thinking, oh my gosh, you know, my body clock is ticking. If I'm going to have a child, it, it has to be soon. And so that's what really pushed her to come to this place of saying, listen, I might not have a child the way that God designed, but I'm going to have a child. And so that's what led her to ultimately being inseminated. I only know by what I read, but I'm told uh, there is a propensity in people that are gay to have huge father issues in their mm -hmm. life. Um, did you have a father issue by being raised by two lesbians? Yeah, I mean, I always say it like this, Sid. I love my mom. She's been such a phenomenal mom. But when you don't walk in the design of God, you can't walk in the blessing of God. And so the reality is I didn't have an actual father ever in the house. And so I began to operate out of an orphan spirit where I had a good life, good grades, good in school. But yet I never felt like anybody actually knew Ross. Like there was a father void in the depth of my soul that I had all the way until the time I was saved. I want you to pray. Um, the biggest need is not just within the gay community. I think the biggest need is for people that have had father wounds that hmm. is kind of interfering with their full relationship with Father God. Is this something that you have passion to pray for people? Absolutely, because sometimes what happens, unfortunately, is due to a lack of a father or not a good father, we then think God is like that, right? And I say it like this, Sid, God is not just a good father, he's a perfect father. And unfortunately, many of us, none of us have experienced a perfect father outside of God. And so let's just pray right now. Is that what you want me to do, Sid? Yeah. Would you mind if I pray? Yeah. Awesome. So Lord, we pray right now for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to reveal the father heart of God right now. And I just declare over every person watching or listening that the orphan spirit that has tried to grip your life would leave right now in Jesus name. 
and never come back. And so we declare the Father's embrace that even as you're in your car, in your house, wherever you're at right now, that from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you would actually begin to experience the manifest presence and love of God. So Holy Spirit, be released right now. Touch hearts, touch minds, and touch bodies. And so we declare the heart and love of the Father to become the greatest reality over your life starting today in Jesus name. Today, you, I, you, you have become a normal believer, which many people would call radical. I would call it biblically normal. You've become a normal believer. Do you remember or was there a first time you thought about God, you thought about Jesus? Um, how did that come into the picture even? Yeah. Well, I mean, growing up in our household, we weren't anti-God. It's just we had never had a conversation about God. I mean, I had literally, I had never been to a church, never heard a worship song, never heard a, a sermon. I mean, zero grid for God. And so I remember I was 15 years old. A friend said, hey, do you want to come to church? I said, absolutely. I, I had nothing to lose. I'm sitting in the back row. And for the first time in my life, Sid, I felt the presence of God. Now, at the time, I didn't know what that was. But now looking back at it, I actually felt the presence of God. I went home that night and I remember having my first ever conversation or dialogue with God. And really what I was saying as I look back on it now is, God, please don't let me be a good person who reads a good book and goes to a good church. God, I have to know you. And so the next week after I had that moment in my room, the pastor says, do you want to give your life to Jesus? I raise my hand, become born again. And now I was a Christian. And did your mother have an opinion on that? Well, it's really interesting because in the beginning, I was too young to drive. So guess who had to drive me to church? <laughs> <laughs> so my mom would drive me to church, go back home and then come pick me up. And she, you know, the thing I love about my mom, she has never once come against me. She's only supported my faith. And that's been such an encouragement to me. And so it's a really unique situation because when you think of the church and the LGBTQ community, you typically think of this big gap and a ton of tension. When in my case, in my circumstances, my mom was never against it. She just never personally engaged with Jesus. You've become a, a wonderful teacher of the word. I see your passion. I see your, your heart for God. I feel just like you felt the presence of God that first time you walked into a church. I feel that same presence of God on you as we're talking right now. Is there one teaching right now that is achieving the best results when you speak? Absolutely. There's something that I really feel the breath of God and the Holy Spirit breathing on in this season. And what that is, is so many times in our culture and in the world we live in today, We've been taught or sometimes we even believe that it is normal to rebel against God. But I've had this thought beginning to be birthed inside of me where it's actually more normal and it's in our design to instead of rebelling against God and obeying the devil, that we rebel against the devil and obey God. And so I always challenge and encourage people, if there's anything you could give your life to that's worth every single moment of your life, it's coming into relationship with God and saying, you know what, devil, I've lived long enough for you. I've served you long enough. All you've done is left me empty. I'm coming home to the father. I'm coming home to the one who loves me and created me and formed me in my mother's womb. We hear the word gospel. We read the word gospel in the New Testament. Briefly, what if you were to explain what the gospel is, how would you explain it? I like to say it like this when I start with the gospel. If you don't understand the storyline of God, you'll never understand the storyline of your own life. And so what the gospel is, it's the greatest story in all of mankind where God creates the heavens and the earth. He creates man. There's no separation. But then unfortunately, one day sin enters the world and God separates from man, not because he hates you, but because he's holy and he can't have a relationship with somebody that's not holy like himself. And so then we see he sends his most prized possession, the one he loves the most, his very own son, Jesus. Jesus comes to the earth. Was he fully God? Absolutely. But he was also fully man. He felt pain. He felt emotion. He felt every single thing that you and I have ever felt. And one day he was actually hung on a cross, 
real nails went through his hands, real blood came out of his body. And when he died on that cross, he became the perfect sacrifice for every single person's sin and mistakes. And so now when we surrender our lives to Jesus, we get free of sin, we get free of trauma, we get free of everything that has tried to grip our lives. But not only that, the story didn't end. We know he rose from the dead and sent his Holy Spirit to the earth. And so every single person who comes into relationship with Jesus receives the Holy Spirit, forgiveness of sins, and has access back to God. It's the greatest story of all about God. Well, you're talking to a lot of people, a lot of believers, a lot of non-believers, a lot of people that just don't like my ministry or watching, and that, but they don't know God the way you know God, the way I know God, the way many of my guests know God. Could you lead us in a prayer to know God, that each one watching that needs to know Him? See, there are a lot of people that believe in Him, but there's a difference between believing him and knowing him. It's a difference between day and night. It's a drastic difference. It's the difference between, I believe, life and death. Here's what's incredible about God. He didn't make us do a crazy religious ritual to come into a relationship with him. He kept it simple. The Bible says that if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and rose from the dead, you will be saved. And so if you're somebody watching, you're saying, you know what? Maybe I don't have it all figured out. Maybe I don't have the best background. Maybe I didn't have the best family. Well, guess what? God loves you. He created you and he sent his son for you. And so if that's you and you're saying, I'm tired of living for myself. I'm tired of living for the world. I'm tired of living for everything but God. Just say this prayer after us. Just say, Jesus, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I believe, I believe you are the son of God. You are the son of God. You rose from the dead. You rose from the dead for me, for me. And I repent and I repent and I turn and I turn from all my sin, from all my sins, from this day forward, from this day forward, I receive you into my heart. I receive you into my heart and make you my Lord and make you my Lord. And just say this last thing, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill me, fill me, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill me with power, fill me with power in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You know, and you've, I'm not going to let you go until you pray one more prayer. There are people struggling with gender identity. There are even people that know the truth but there's such a hold on them that they go back and forth, even though they know the truth. Can you pray for those people right now? The Bible says that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I want you to know we're going to pray right now, but you're not just going to be free for today. You're going to be free for the rest of your life through the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I pray right now in Jesus name for any spirit of confusion to leave every person listening and watching. And we declare the spirit of lust. I command you to go right now. And I just say, let clarity and peace and identity come upon your heart and mind right now in the name of Jesus. Would you see who you really are through Christ? So, Father, we declare freedom. <laughs> freedom right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, be restored, come into alignment with the will of heaven right now. And so the last thing I pray is that the Lord would show you who you are and whose you are in Jesus name. I want you to pray for people with any kind of pain, physical pain in their body right now. Awesome. Well, the Bible says that you receive all the promises of God by one simple thing, faith. And every person who came to Jesus was healed. And so we declare right now in Jesus name, we release healing over every single person watching and listening, healing in your body, healing in your mind, healing in your bloodstream, healing in your nervous system, healing in your brain, 
So we just declare the healing power of the Holy Spirit to be released right now. Signs, miracles, and wonders be done in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, be healed. So we speak to you and we speak to your body and we say, be healed in Jesus' name. And while he was praying, actually, even before I heard this, there are people viewing right now that have back, B-A-C-K, problems, pain. If that's you, I'm speaking to you. God himself is releasing his healing. He gets the praise. He gets the glory from this. If you have a, any sort of pain in your back I, I, or hip uh, or neck, any pain there, especially I heard back so clearly, but uh, it's, it's any region in your body. Stand up right now. If you're driving, please don't. <laughs> Pull over and then stand up and bend over, move your body, shoulder pain, it's gone. I even hear people are being healed in their prostate area right now, in Jesus' name. And I'm seeing fingers, like you have arthritic fingers, bend them, you'll see the pain is gone. Ross, is there one thing more that you would have liked me to ask you and I didn't ask you that you'd like to share? Yeah, all I would say is I truly believe we are living on the moment of the hinge of history in America and the nations of the earth. And there's only sometimes when people look at certain Christians' lives, they go, man, I want to burn for God. I want to do great things for God. And this phrase has been dropped in my spirit. That sometimes the only difference between somebody burning for God and somebody not is one simple word, the word yes. If you would say yes to God today, Get past the apathy, the disappointment, the things that didn't go your way and say, God, I want everything you have for me. I am all in. I am sold out for you. He will take your life to places that you never could imagine. All right. You just heard the challenge by Ross, by way of God, that is. It's a challenge from God himself. At the count of three, I want everyone to say that Y-E-S word. Yes. One, two, three. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>